How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is the FNIRSI transistor tester. It's pretty helpful if you're an electronic hobbyist and you're trying to scavenge parts off of other products. It can test all kinds of things like FETs, BJTs, resistors, capacitors, inductors, diodes, zener diodes, and it even has an infrared decoder to check on remote signals. Let me unbox this and show you all the features. No component. Zener diode testing, 300 milliamp hour battery inside. Instruction manual, a little test board, three test leads with clips on the end, and a USB-C charge cable. It comes with an extra test board. You can put one of these components into this slot here. Anything that has the same symbol, for example, if it says one, they're all connected together. Therefore, if you have a component that is somewhat large, you can straddle from pin one over here to pin three at the end and close it and it'll connect one to three. This module is removable so you can just pull it out and insert this PCB with all these pads on top and you just align this notch to that over there. Push it in there. Push it to turn it on so we can just touch this on here. Switch it to transistor testing. It's transistor, diodes and stuff, anything except infrared decoding. And we press test and it detects a resistance of 11.3 ohms. It's a 110, which is an 11 ohm. Gold band means it's 5%. So it does read within what the tolerance of this is. For a diode, we still want to use pin one, two, or three. So just to connect each one to a different pin, I'm just gonna connect it to the bottom two pads here and then press test. It says diode. It gives you some handy metrics such as the four diode drop, the diode capacitance, and the leakage current. Note that it knows that I've connected to pin two and three here. But if I reverse the diode and test it again, notice that little line on the diode does not actually follow on pin two. It stayed the same. So beware that this picture does not follow the direction of which way you put the diode. Let me switch back to the other measurement head. Since this is actually a lot handier because it'll hold your component in place. I'll test a electrolytic capacitor now. Press test. This is after about 10 seconds or so. So it took a little while to measure this. It has a 0.8% loss, ESR of 2.07 ohms, capacitance of 9.3 microfarads. It is a 10 microfarad capacitor. About 7% lower than what it says on here. Many voltmeters will actually not test the inductance of an inductor. So this is really cool that you can do this. Put it in here, press it and it shows an inductance of 529 microhenries, a resistance of 0.6 ohms. Let's test each one. All you have to do is just stick it into pin one, two, three, push test, and it knows this is a FET. It will give you four metrics here, the threshold voltage, the gate capacitance, drained source resistance, and UF is 626 millivolt. This looks like a body diode drop voltage across pin three and two. Let's try a new transistor test this one. Now we have a NPN transistor, HFE of 72, that's the gain, IE of 675 microamps, UBE of 606 millivolts. Let's try yet another one. This is a PNP transistor, HFE of 127. Notice the pin one, two, three, right? It goes upwards. If I flip this transistor around, and do a test again. It now says one, two, three. So when you're measuring the transistor, this symbol is correct in terms of the direction. Now let's try the Zener function. We will try the 18 volt one first. Put the marker on the cathode side, close it, and then we will test. And then it's gonna measure the breakdown voltage right there. 17.21 when it's supposed to be an 18 volt, pretty close. So I'll do a 10 volt one now, test. It does say 10 volt. So this is very handy if you don't know the specifications and you just kind of want to know the rough characteristics or maybe if you want to sort these things and put them back into your bin. Now let's try the infrared decoding. I tried this AC remote first when I pushed the buttons. It actually doesn't sense it. It might be on a different carrier frequency. So it's not a universal infrared decoder. I have this other remote. It's a little bit more generic. So if I push this, it will indeed sense it. It gives an address code, which is just the address of this remote. It sends it out every time and then there's a command. So if I push different things, the address stays the same, 2A0 and the command changes, 807F, 08F7, 6A95. So every single button has a different command code. This is not going to measure everything that you can toss at it. For example, 
example. The inductor can only measure up to 1000 micro Henry or that's one milli Henry. I have this really large inductor here. This is a 100 milli Henry, so it's a little big. Even if I bend the leads here, and try to fit it in there. So we can try to measure it. Okay, it can do it after all. That's weird. So your mileage may vary. If your component is a little bit too big, you can also put in these test leads, close it on there, holds it in place, connect it to our large inductor, push test, and it still measures it as an inductor, 103.7 millihenries. Using this just to press on, it's a little annoying and hard to get a good contact, but these are a lot more handy. And if your components are small enough, it's really great to use this little clip thingy. So if you bought brand new parts, it's gonna say what kind of specification it has. And many times you don't need to test those, you just plop them into your project. I have a tray of transistors. It's a bit annoying if you need to look up every single part number. So you can just plop it onto this check what kind of transistor it is, check what kind of gain, what threshold voltage, and then you can reuse some of these parts. Checking inductors and capacitors is particularly useful because they sell these LCR meters that are like $100, $200 on their own. But with this, you can test transistors, zeners, FETs on top of inductors and capacitors. Maybe you have a batch of parts and you just want to sort of bin them and see which one are better performing than others. Maybe you have some transistors and you want a specific gain, or maybe you want to match two transistors with the same gain so that you can, you know, use them as a pair. If you guys are interested in getting this FNI RSI transistor tester, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.